How's it going you guys? Jump Skills here. Today I'm going to be going over the 25 quarter stars and the BM100 nerfs part 2, 3. I don't know. I lost count how many nerfs that BM Hunters have received just in this season alone, but it's a few. But um before we talk about that though, I just want to let you guys know that the DPS this week for overall for all classes, just not BM Hunters, Drew and Shade week is going to be inaccurate so your overall numbers is going to be very inaccurate as long as shades are up your dps will either fall off because you're not dps in the shades and you're just running away or you're attacking the shades and you're just padding your numbers and you're going to see an increase in your dps overall because no one else is attacking the shade either or one of the two is going to happen um with that being said though let's talk about the bm hunter nurse so for just for this video, I just want to make sure I get off this sh my chest. Blizzard has nerfed the Rasbo. They nerfed our kill command, and they nerfed us before we went live. It drew in 10.0.7 season. Before we went live, they nerfed us. They nerfed our abilities, and I understand we were kind of broken before that went live. And then when the ring came out, they nerfed our kill command because the ring kind of justified it which is fine i understand but now they nerfed us again for a three percent dps and i have other hunters asking me why are they nerfing us i'm losing 10 percent 10k dps overall because of the nerfing single target and mythic plus and excuse my computer i had a bad lag spike here and i gotta get a new gaming laptop but let's get back on with the bm hunters so the nerfs to me makes no sense. I understand from a single target perspective that the nerfs were justified. Our single targets were just insane out of this world, correct? But when it came to AoE and Mythic Plus, our AoE was not that incredibly strong to justify why you would nerf us. I have done other Mythic Plus dungeons as well this week. I did Ruby Life and I did the hood both at 24 key level and personally i've not seen much of a dps drop off i don't feel the nerf to be honest with you i don't see much of the nerf but at the same time though in this quarter stars my dps was kind of low in my opinion i didn't do this my best it was not my best i think it was at a 92 to 94k dps overall throughout this dungeon run so i think i was either last or the rogue was last i don't remember off the top of my head i ran this either on reset day or yesterday um but back to what i was saying before i don't i didn't feel the nerfs in the hood and ruby life but in those dungeons there's a lot of aoe situations going on and they're like there's a lot of damage that can be distributed throughout that run but if you run like a quarter stars here you can probably feel it because you're not gonna get big pools compared to like the hood so personally the nerf makes no sense to me i've heard from other hunters in conversation as well that in 10.1 bm hunters is going to be less than mm I don't, I'm not going to report that or I'm not going to confirm any of that information. I have not looked at MM Hunter logs because I'm, my mind is only on BM, but I heard BM Hunters is not going to be good compared to MM. I don't know that if that's 100% confirmed or not, but that's just what I'm hearing and I've not got a chance to go into beta testing. I've just looked at logs and streams. That's all I've been doing. I've not had a chance. I don't play this game professionally to go just have. I don't have all the free time in the world, pretty much, is what I'm saying. But BM Hunters in 10.1 were kind of in danger from what I'm hearing. I hope Blizzard buffs us again and see the error of their mistakes because we don't have a cooldown and our AoE is not the best. Our single target at a point was amazing. And this dungeon run here. There was a couple, I think it was either the third boss or the, yeah, it was the third boss or this boss here where the monk just obliterated me in single target DPS. Like he destroyed me in single target and being BM, like it felt nice having like a reputation, like 
like if BM Hunter was gonna be good at single target, then BM Hunter would be good for single target. Like other classes have their specialties. Other classes are good at AOE. Other classes are good at single target. Now here BM might not be the best in single target like it used to. I don't know. But like I said before though, the shades definitely influence the DPS run because I was not padding my numbers. So I gotta wait till the next week, fortified week, to see what the damage was essentially to see how much of a DPS loss it was and confirm the numbers from there. But throughout this dungeon run though, like I said, like I mentioned before, in the hood and the Ruby Life that I ran, I didn't feel the DPS nerf in the Ruby Life. Like it was in the back of my head because one, I didn't play my best this Ruby Life or not this Ruby Life, this Quarter Stars. I didn't die or anything. It's just my DPS. I feel like I could have did a little bit more dps number wise but that's neither here or there that's more of on me more of a player issue but the dps nerf is just the single target you can tell that there's a drop off you can definitely tell on single target for aoe you can't really tell for a single target i mean for aoe you cannot tell for a damage dps wise if there's a nerf excuse me and for single target, you can definitely tell there is a huge drop off compared to what we were before. But for AOE, you can't tell depending on how many ads there are. But for single target, you can definitely, you can have, you can feel it. You can feel it for sure. So here in this quarter stars, I made sure that one, I didn't die. I did not die this whole entire dungeon run. Two, I made sure to switch between my lust pet and my healing pet because this this place is rough on tyrannical the bosses are bad and but for this boss here it was really easy is the second boss and the third boss is where i had to switch my pet from a lust pet to my spirit pet healing pet where i get fortitude of the bear and i just needed that extra defensive but here there was nothing going on there's literally nothing here that could there's no AOE damage or anything. If When you get Arcane Lock, like it just happened now, you can just easily disengage from it. And that's the only thing you need to be aware of besides the beams that come out of nowhere that try to one-shot you. But in terms of like an AOE constant dot damage that happens in most, most bosses, like the second boss or the third boss, there's none here in this first boss. If you can disengage the Arcane Lock every single time it's applied to you, then you should be safe. That's the only... That's the only problem in this boss fight. Everything else is smooth sailing. Um, but yeah, I did not die this whole entire boss fight. It was a good run. I believe it was a very good run. Um, I made sure to be very cautious with my pets because these pug group, I was luckily to get inside this pug group here. Um, I ran this in the morning um, with the BM Hunter nerfs being obviously live. I had a hard time getting into a mythic plus group throughout the popular times of when to run dungeons usually it's like in the afternoon or in the evening east coast time so i was having a hard time so i made sure to try to find a group in the morning and usually in the morning there's no there's not much competition out there like a shaman or a mage that they probably want to bring over a hunter that just got nerfed so i made sure to get a run in the morning and play with these guys this is just a pug group pre-made, like I said. Um, but here, I just made sure that I use my wailing arrow, use all my utilities. Here, if I ever saw the tank backing up or running, I made sure to put wailing, not wailing, binding shot down onto the floor just in case he wanted to run away. Um, I made sure that the tank was good and clear just to make sure he had a safety net because our healer was doing the, the skip and... I just wanted to make sure if the tank died, then it's probably going to go next to the melee. Then the melee is going to be to the range. So I had to make sure that he was good and safe. But this pally tank was really good. He's one of the best pally pug tanks I've seen in a really long time. One of the best tanks overall that I ran with. He's probably top two, top three best tanks that I ran with this whole entire season. Because the way he was pulling, it was really good. The imps were padding left to right throughout this whole first pack, and he kept pulling the mobs back into the spawn room 
where we're at to make sure that we didn't pull the imps with any of the extra ads and that's just the mythic plus iq there is just beautiful very beautiful we didn't pull any shades the tank was doing a fantastic job making sure that the ads were not in with the imps until we were fully committed in killing the imps because even on tyrannical or fortified those imps will one shot you man those imps will one shot you and it's terrible it's a terrible feeling so clearly i'm getting chased by shades usually for hunters let's just keep it real none of the aphasix really affects hunters especially this week quaking doesn't affect us unless you're resing your pet if you res your pet during quaking you're gonna get stunned and you're gonna be arcane locked and shades i mean if you get hit by a shade then you're pretty much you're like you're probably gonna die but i got hit with shade once and i luckily did not die earlier in the video but <laughs> that was just luck man that was luck i was very shocked that i, I survived that so we made sure to focus our attention into the imps i willing arrowed at the very end just to make sure that they were all cleared and i had a beautiful beautiful interrupt set here it got real real sketch because one the enforcer was not moving so we had to run like hell the tank nearly died um i rarely see this this pack pulled together and successfully pulled off Usually when this pack's put together, it's usually a wipe for most of the groups that I ran with in Pugs. But this tank knew what he was doing. Like I said, one of the best tanks I ran with all season. He pulled all three and he did a really good job in making sure that that he had his defenses ready and made sure we were line of sight. And here I almost died because I got quaked on. I got quaked on, but I understand why I got quaked on. They didn't want to get hit with the detonation. I think the rogue got hit with a de designation ability by the enforcer, so it was all good and dandy. He was the only person down, and like I said before, I don't, I did not die. I had very close calls on when I was gonna die, especially that second boss. That second boss was very, very sketchy. Um, here, the boss made sure, or the tank made sure to pull this guy away from the ads and the enforcer and all the pats um i was very close to pulling that pat behind me um but i didn't want to get hit but this guy is just pretty easy i mean if you, you just gotta make sure you heal yourself just in just before the aoe scream because that stuff hurts and this boss, this mini boss makes no sense to me because it's it gets treated as a ad on Fortified Week, but it gets treated as a mini boss as well on Tyrannical Week where you can't, if you die, you can't respawn and go spawn and go kill him. So like it's treated as both as a boss and as an ad because it benefits from all the emphasis when it's like bolstering or raging like it benefits from it and then it's just quarter stars i used to love quarter stars to death it used to be one of my favorite dungeons but now i'm kind of over quarter stars i <laughs> can't lie to you it's time for quarter stars to hit it just retire for for a while this guy here all i know is that if that beam targets you the one that the pally just interrupted if that beam targets you you can easily just fan it off and I did not mention that in the tip guide video or the arcane lock. So that's my mistake. I take ownership in that. But I know if you can feign this, the beam will stop beam casting on you and you avoid any extra damage. Um, but besides that, though, this guy is very, very tough. If you get that nasty, nasty dot on you man is highly highly suggested you pop a defensive man because it can one shot you it really can't especially on fortified dude like people save their lust for this guy right here because he sucks that bad he's one of the worst mini bosses out the three so here we're going to the other side we're going to pull the imps with the two sets of ads um 
clearly, as you can see, did not have the best run. Um, we're just ignoring shade, so I'm not really padding my DPS numbers. So the so the pull continues. Um, here, the rogue dominated. He literally killed these whole entire sets of imps before I can even get a wailing arrow off. So. The only thing that sucks about this is that my DPS did suffer a little bit because I was trying to cast Wailing Arrow onto the Imps, but I never got a chance because those Imps were just gone and down. But luckily, the Shades continued the, the pull, and the DPS overall does not stop because the Shades are, quote-unquote, still part of the pool. So I made sure to not fall too far behind um i didn't get the best start with the imps and it's unfortunate because i was trying to make sure that we didn't die with with wailing arrow being casted i'm not gonna lie to you i don't know if i casted wailing arrow if it would get affected by quaking that's something i never happened to me yet and i don't know if that's I don't know if I'll get silenced for doing that. I might or might not. I have not tried it yet, but something to think about. So we get to the easiest third mini boss here, in my opinion. This guy literally does no damage. He's pretty much a brute. He just jumps and slams. Pretty much what a warrior would do. Um, his shockwave is definitely a one shot if you stand in front of it and if you stand in in that leap you're probably gonna die so pretty much warrior vibes right um so i should i the first time we needed to leap it was probably it was my fault i wanted i should have stayed next to the group so he didn't jump really far and melee can continue to dps so melee didn't have to travel over there but i have a bad hunter range habit now that standing far as possible for my hunter's sake and for survivability sake so i just try to stay close to next to the range or melee and make sure that we did not have to travel too far i didn't make melee travel too far to hit the guy so this boss here i try to dismiss my pet to get my lust pet going but obviously i try and i try to mount up as well but obviously the shade was targeting me so here, this is where stuff gets a little sketchy. I made sure to get my Lust Pet out, but I had a late start to the boss pool because I had to dismiss my pet for an extra defensive and I made sure to save my cooldowns, quote unquote, if hunters even, ha if you consider hunters having cooldowns with Death Charm and I just wanted to make sure these ads were going down. I wanted to save my quote unquote cooldowns for the imps particularly because they they will one shot they will one shot anyone with that fireball and i think they one shot at somebody in this encounter so but it didn't one shot me like i said before i did not die this whole entire dungeon run which felt good i made sure to wailing arrow those guys so they didn't get a cast off and it just started getting rough from here man this the longer this boss fight continued like it just got rough and rough man like i'm honestly shocked that i survived this and we had a bad quaking to go on top of this and i made sure to have my cooldowns and made sure that these imps were cleaved um we lost the dps to that ability i don't know if that was fireball or anything but he clearly got one shotted one shotted two shotted one of the two um made sure that I was going to pot these guys next. I think I pot, yeah, I potted these guys. I made sure to use everything for these imps because these imps are just, they. this boss will make or break the key. And if you can kill this boss, this dungeon is pretty much yours. This boss in this whole dungeon r literally relies on this second boss here. It's very frustrating, especially on Tyrannical Week. You just got to make sure you kill this boss. So it got real ugly here. So I used all my healing defenses at that point and we didn't have anything in terms of aoe stuns or nothing like it just got real real sketch i'm surprised that that imp didn't come after me um but besides that though 
it was I used everything including I if you look at my bar right now I have no defense like I'm literally hanging out butt ass naked pretty much and we killed it barely <laughs> barely and I had like I hate not having any defenses but I made sure to use every defense including my health potion in that situation here we pretty much knew that this place was free and the rogue found this guy within with one clue with one clue the rogue found him within seconds like it's crazy it was crazy like by the time i went, wanted to go upstairs to start asking people questions and clues like it was the rogue found it so here at this point they were telling me that this key was pretty much you just gotta focus and this key is pretty much done i was getting kind of excited because I've been trying to time this key on Tyrannical for weeks, for weeks on Tyrannical week. So I pretty much looked at my score, looked at my score, see who timed keys this week. Like I was getting a little ahead of myself. I'm not going to lie. I'd never gotten this far before, so I didn't really know how to act. So this guy here is pretty much is a joke on Tyrannical, but it still hurts. I did not die. I just wanted to confirm that to myself during this dungeon run that I did not die at all. Um, made sure that this guy had to go down. Um, there is one error in this encounter here that we did not interrupt uh, a bat when this guy died. And someone had to suffer for it. I think it was either the rogue or the monk. Someone had to suffer for it. And I'm luckily glad that was not me. Because that could have easily been, been me. But we did not interrupt or stun the bat at all. So we had an extra death before we killed the boss. Before we encountered the boss. So I was doing a little padding. I wanted to get my dps numbers up a little bit I, I will not lie to you i was trying to pad with the with the bats but all in all i know the monks padding unless monks single target dps has always been broken particularly i never ran with the monk dps so i don't have good information on them because i don't ever see them on high keys like it's very rare that you see in my situation that you see a monk in high keys i never seen one so it was the rogue that ended up getting hypnotized and got one shot he got one tap to the floor because we did not stun the last bat which is kind of bs because usually the guy that casts the ability if he dies usually all other abilities goes with it but apparently blizzard failed to mention that that does not apply to mobs or bosses. So here, this boss, it was it was okay. I realized, and here's another tip as well, that usually those things on the floor, those mini tornadoes, you can easily turtle them and clear the floor, and it'll be less stressful on yourself and your healer to worry about any extra damage. My single target burst was amazing. I had... I used the puzzle box. I did not use the. I didn't use pre pot because I didn't have it for 40 seconds, but I wanted to get this boss down as quickly as possible. So I had to use one and then use the other one later. Unfortunately, I realized that my mastery is very, 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 very low, but that's just the way my gear is right now that my mastery is just low. If I had more mastery, then I believe that my damage will be higher. I had a bad bait here because I was trying to get into the Druid's AoE healing circle and benefit from it, but clearly that Im influence having a bad bait. So I don't know when I did the turtle, the turtle thing, but I know I did it because there's a lot of tornadoes on the floor and it needed to be clear up, dude. Like if he, if this was not cleared, then we're probably gonna have a hard, hard time so here there's a lot of stuff going on i wanted to make sure i head on to that buff as long as possible and make the most benefit out of the dps buff from thundering so i got back to the healers circle thing but once again it influenced a bad bait and 
Oh, and I got stunned. I jumped into that, but thank goodness someone had my back here. I think this next run, I cleared all the mini tornadoes because I had no other defensives left to survive except the healing one, which I could have used, but there were just so much tornadoes that had to go. It just had to, it had to go. So here, boss is getting pretty low. My single target is okay, and DPS is not out of this world crazy like it was back before the nerfs, but it's just what it is. Um, right here, oh, I had the bad, the bad thundering, so I had to clear off as soon as possible, get back to position. Um, but yeah, it was it was a pretty good run. I didn't get. I didn't have anything else. Oh, the tank gave me a bubble, which was nice of him. He's going to happen right here. And I popped my two-minute cooldown, my healing cooldown. So I was like, okay, well, I'll have something. I have my health pot, and I have my other cooldown that's going to come up. But that was nice of the tank. I love pally tanks. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Pally tanks are just the best tanks ever. And yeah, man, it was GG's from here on out, man. It was smooth, man. This dungeon was smooth. Just six deaths. I was not one of them, and the tank was not one of them as well. But like I said before, great runs. Thank you guys for watching, man. You guys have a good rest of your day.